So hello guys, thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Science Save Sharks brought to you by Marine Dynamics. My name is Dicky Chivel and joining us today is one of our best and brightest in the field, Miss Alina Preshkina. Alina, thanks for joining. Hello everyone. Hi Dicky, thank you so much for having me. Uh, welcome to everyone who's just joined us and uh, who continue watching our sessions as well. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, guys, thank you very much for all the new faces and all the guys who are usually watching. Um, we've got a bit of a twist for you guys this afternoon. We're going to be talking about a different species of shark called the bronze whaler. And we're going to run a bit of a comparison um, on that to our great white sharks as well. Now, Alina, you and I have both spent a lot of time with these sharks, but you more so on our east, on our shark edge diving vessel um, every day um, have spent a lot of time with these sharks. So let's jump right in, and I'm going to ask you to give us more or less a description of the bronze whaler shark. Absolutely. So yeah, as you said, I've spent quite a quite quite some time with them. Guys, ignore this image. That's not what we're <laughs> going to be talking yeah. about. <laughs> This is our great white shark, guys. And uh, let me just share a picture of our yeah, bronze whaler. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, guys. So this is our bronze whaler. Bronze whalers, they're also known as copper sharks and also known as narrow tooth sharks. And uh, most of the time, you'll probably hear bronzies from us. That's the affectionate name that we have for them. And guys, they're a relatively large species that can grow up to 3.3 meters and they have a beautiful bronze coloration to them. Guys, on the picture that you're seeing right now, this is the uh, actually screenshot from underwater footage, and we are gonna treat you with that footage at the end of this session, guys. So if you do wanna see it, please stay tuned with us, and then there is some pretty incredible footage. Boom! <laughs> pretty incredible footage waiting for you at the end of the session, guys. Alrighty, guys, so uh, these sharks that we are gonna be talking about, bronze whalers, they're not uh, related to the great white sharks, not directly. Directly. They are from a requiem family and they do have a little bit different form of body. Let me just show you, give you a visual on that comparison. So okay. guys, on the left hand side, we have our bronze whaler and on the right hand side, you have our great white shark. Both beautiful animals, absolutely stunning. And uh, here you can actually see the beautiful dorsal side to the bronze whaler and you can see where the bronze name is coming from. Alrighty yeah. guys, so if you look at them, uh, it's quite easy to see the differences really when you look at them just uh, one next to each other. But what you're looking for, you're looking for the snout. So with our bronzies, you do have this quite round and flat snout where with great white sharks, they are called white pointers in Australia for a reason. They have a very pointy snout. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the, the girth to the white sharks is quite distinguishable as well. They just have a little bit different form. While bronzies, they're a little bit, they're just a little bit more slender, a little bit more agile. Guys, also you would look for their tail. Hi, Nikita. Oh, hi, Nikita. Hello. Thank Glad you. to see <laughs> you once again. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank so you much very much. Okay, sorry, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no worries, no problem. Uh, so we're looking at their caudal fins, and when I say caudal fins, it's our tails. Uh, with copper sharks, the upper lobe, so the upper part of the tail is a little bit longer than the, than the lower lobe. With great white sharks, you can see it's quite symmetrical. And yeah, as I said, just form in general, they're just a little bit more girthy, the great white sharks, rather than uh, copper sharks. Uh, another thing uh, is, I would say, the eyes. For me, when I see a great white shark, their eyes is the first thing that I see, really, when I look at their face. I, yeah. The eyes, they're proportionally larger and they're quite dark, so they're, they're very, very bright on their face. With copper sharks, the eyes are beautiful, but sometimes it is a little bit uh, tricky to actually notice them. They're much smaller and also they're much lighter as well. Uh, also, guys, um, they do have different um, ways of protecting their eyes, and I do have the picture for that as well. Dicky, do you want to tell us what's happening on the right hand side? <laughs> Okay, yeah, man. Um, yeah, and this is a very interesting point that you're bringing up, Alina. Um, also, very cool shots to portray what we're trying to show. So, guys, on the right-hand side, we have a great white shark. And the moment right at predation, what the great white sharks do to protect, obviously, a vital part of their survival, their eyes, is they roll it back inside their head, as you can clearly see there. Now, this does temporarily for a split second or so make them blind um 
in, but that's usually when they've already got either the seal or whatever um, in their mouth. It's just that last split second of attack. But these guys are actually rolling their eyes back into their heads. But something different is happening there um, on the left with the bronze whaler. And Alina, I'm going to hand that over to you so you can explain to us what, they, what they're doing. Exactly. I uh, wouldn't explain it better. So, guys, mm -hmm. uh, all the animals, they do need to protect their vision. That's, uh, that's the sense that we all rely on. And um, with sharks, the same, same thing goes for sharks. So the great white sharks, they roll their eyes. With uh, our copper sharks, uh, the whole requiem family, what they have, they have a nictitating membrane. I know it's quite a difficult word <laughs> to pronounce, quite a funny yeah. word mm -hmm. as well. Uh, guys, it's just a membrane. Uh, it acts as an eyelid, and it is there to protect their vision. So once they go for the attack, they would actually just cover it with the membrane, and their eyes nice and safe. It's a semi-transparent membrane, so it's a little bit different from great white sharks, but also copper sharks, they're not hunting such large animals like great white sharks would. So it's just a membrane for them. They don't really take the eyes out of the equation there. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a third eyelid. And... Um... So you mentioned this is one of the traits of of the requiem family. So what family? What family is that? And which sharks? Uh, which are some of the sharks that comprise of this this family? Because that's also a very interesting interesting topic in its own. Yeah. So guys, requiem family. It's a very large family of sharks, and uh, it consists of sixty different species. I would say the most representative uh, member is our tiger shark. I bet everyone who's watching us right now know how tiger sharks look like and where they are and where you can find them. Uh, but also probably most of you know blue sharks and bull sharks and also um, our lemon sharks as well. Is your vision good or is that the weakest of the senses? Well, actually, Thanks very good question. Thank you so much for the question, the expedition project. Uh, guys, it's a very good question. It used to be believed that uh, white sharks, they don't have, have a very good vision and they can't see very well. However, it's been proven wrong because they do have quite a good eyesight. Uh, the structure of an eye is quite similar to the, to the human structure as well. Uh, they can be a little bit farsighted, but uh, I mean, they don't really need to read anything. So I think they're, they're doing quite <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but their vision um, is largely very well, obviously depending on the visibility, I would say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, they've got course. good vision, but, but, but yeah. But man. guys, great white sharks, they do rely on their vision a lot because obviously that's, um, especially in our area, that they would how, how they would go around hunting their seals. So they would uh, check out the surface and that's how they would find their prey. So they definitely do rely on their eyesight. Yeah, I mean, the guys, the, the shark breaching up, they obviously have to see that that visually in order to launch themselves out of the water. They have to see that seal in order to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Expedition no Project. It's a really My cool pleasure. question. Um, so Alina, you were still touching on the requiems, I, I believe. Okay. So guys, as I said, there are a lot of species of them there. Uh, bronzies, however, they are the species in the fairly temperate, and I say temperate, I mean colder waters. Usually the requiem sharks, they would be in the subtropical or tropical waters. Guys, also bronze whalers, they are very widely distributed, so they, you can find them pretty much anywhere in the world, starting from South Africa, Namibia, Australia, uh, New Zealand, but also the Mediterranean and other parts of the Pacific Ocean. So they're pretty much everywhere. However, guys, the populations, they are separated. So there is not much overlap between those populations, and there are, there, there's been um, gen genetic studies that prove that. Okay, so if you're fish out, fishing out uh, a specific population or you're decimating a specific population, that population would then be decimated. It's not like exactly. sharks from all over are going to come, come in. Is that what you – yeah, would exactly. that be Absolutely. as well? Yes, okay. we, we, we will touch on that a little bit later. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Um, and Alina, so – very cool that the bronzies are temperate uh, when it comes to the the um, requiem family. Why are they called bronzies in the first place? Why are they called bronze whalers, which is the accepted term? It's actually quite a lot of. Uh, sorry. Uh, hello, TJ. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, nice. Yeah. Oh, what? Boom, That's right on funny. time, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, TJ. Uh, so with our bronze whalers, a lot of people actually get confused because they start asking, what do they have to do with whales? Uh, are they whales? 
Do they feel? <laughs> we do get questions like that, guys. We, we do, do, guys. We do. <laughs> I just want to point out they have nothing to do with whales. Uh, it's not their prey. Uh, the, not their main prey item. They wouldn't go hunt whales. Uh, they are nothing to do with whales. They are sharks. Uh, but the reason why it just has the historical meaning back in the whaling days when the um, people on the whaling ships, they saw the large amount of sharks uh, attracted by the oil and all the blood in the water. They just started calling them whalers. And of course, our bronze, as I mentioned, the bronze whaler, it came from their color of their dorsal side. So it's, it does have quite a historical meaning to the name, which is pretty cool, I think. Yeah, man, that is cool. I dove with you guys in 2017. TJ, come back Perfect. after this come COVID back. stuff, man. Join us again. Always a new trip. Every experience is different. Thanks, bro. Thank you for tuning in as well. And thank you for the questions. I um, hope you I've got a question. Yeah, man. Uh, I've got a question of my own, Alina. So <laughs> I just need to remember. <laughs> I just need to remember what that is. So obviously, apart from we were talking about their names, the bronze whalers. Um, apart from feeding on dead whales, as you mentioned, it's not their primary prey source. What does the bronzies diet consist of? Uh, so, guys, the, our bronze whalers, they are piscivorous species, which means that they mainly would be feeding on fish. They are very, very happy with, uh, with their fish diet. Uh, they may go after cephalopods, so our octopuses and squids, and also smaller sharks as well. Their teeth, guys, they are they're perfect for such prey as they are quite small and narrow and a little bit hooked. Oh, there we go. There's actually a picture of, uh, of them on the left there. You can see, guys, they're quite small and narrow and hooked. And this actually allows them to grab on their slippery prey and actually keep it in their mouth. Guys, just in comparison to the great white shark teeth, you can see it on the right. With great white sharks, their teeth are much wider and uh, they, they have this perfect triangular shape to them and they're also serrated and that allows them to tear through the flesh and bone in this perfect way that only a great white shark can really. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can see the difference is just different diets and um, obviously for different diet you would need different teeth. Yeah, man. Um, and hence, narrow tooth being one of the names, the fact that, they're, that <laughs> their teeth are so narrow. So when looking at this, guys, um, Alina, how would they actually go about hunting um, the bronzies? Okay, so again, as I said before, that uh, I actually didn't mention that before, guys. Another difference with great white sharks is that they are not lone hunters. They would, uh, they would actually be uh, traveling in groups and hunting in groups as well. And uh, you would find them from two to three individuals up to a hundred, and they are corporate. Hey, mom. Hunters. Hey, Maggie. Sorry, <laughs> it's just my mom <laughs> and my little cousin. Yeah. Hey, guys. Thank you That's very sweet. much for watching. <laughs> Sorry, Alina. Sorry for no interrupting. <laughs> so, guys, as I said, they are cooperative hunters, which means that they will use their numbers and their advantage. They are highly associated with the sardine run. Uh, Dicky, you definitely know about that. I don't know if anyone's heard about it before, but guys, sardine run, it's an annual event that's happening on the east coast of South Africa. So the sardine, they spawn, and then they start moving up the, up the coast, and that create the huge bait balls. And actually, uh, one of our, uh, well, our senior biologists, she just came uh, back from filming sardine run this year. And it is around this year every year. Dickie, you've been yeah. to one as well, haven't you? Yeah, man. Sardine Run, guys. Um, for those of you who have not been or have not checked it out, please check it out. It is one of the most incredible nature spect spectacles on the planet. So you've got all these bait fish moving up the coast and then all the predators gathering. And it's just massive, massive feeding balls. Um, so you get this bait ball with not only the birds coming in, you've got hundreds of sharks also on these balls, dolphins coming in through um, whales as well. So it is incredible feeding frenzy. And I remember my first time, Alina, mentioning you, mentioning the bronzies on the sardine run. Mm, there are different species of sharks, but bronzies are very prominent there as well. Um, it's just jumping off the boat. I was quite a lot younger and looking down to just see an ocean full of sharks. Now, this was before I started actively um, making a profession of diving with sharks. So to me, I just looked down and there were just hundreds and hundreds of sharks below me. And it was just 
one of the most incredible dives of my entire life. So guys, Sardine Run, one for the books, definitely an, an incredible experience. Yeah, right. yeah, Alina, I wish you were there. It was crazy. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, Tureen, uh, uh, thank you, Tureen. Hello. Yeah, guys, so uh, while we're still on the hunting, I actually, I will explain how they actually do that. So guys, in Sardine Run, as we said, there's uh, this huge bait balls and they go around them. What they would do, they, as I said, they would use the numbers. They would surround this, this uh, bait ball. They would try to make it tighter. So they would just close it up a little bit and then they would lunge one at a time. So every, every shot can get their fish. So it's very, very impressive how they actually cooperating on uh, trying to get their dinner. It's very impressive. Yeah, man. Especially when it's in your face, <laughs> in your face like that. It's truly, truly crazy. Um, so we're talking about these different, um, different populations of the bronzes. We've established a lot about their physical attributes and the fact that they're just an incre incredible species of shark. But now we have to get to the serious stuff. Alina, are they a protected species of shark? Uh, so they are listed as near threatened on IUCN list, uh, which unfortunately makes them not protected species. And when we had our first live session, uh, wait, sorry, Nikita, amazing animals, very beauty and Thank elegance. You. What is IUCN? Oh, the <laughs> great, great. <laughs> well, are what they is protected? <laughs> what is happening? You guys are asking. You guys are on point. You've obviously you seen a few of point. these sessions. <laughs> So guys, cool they are range. near threatened and unfortunately that means that they are not protected species. And uh, as I said, when we had our first uh, session with Dickie, when we talked about different products and uh, how, how the sharks are being used, we talked briefly about our copper sharks and how they are targeted species by commercial and recreational fisheries here in South Africa. We did mention that they are used for meat consumption and usually South African stock, it would actually be ex exported to Australia and used as flake. So guys, we did mention the website that you can visit if you want to make to, to take some actions and uh, to just educate myself, yourself maybe a little bit more. And this is our yeah. shark free chips. So guys, this is the website. You're very welcome to go and uh, look through it again. Yeah, guys, we encourage you to check out this website. And for those of you who weren't tuned in on the first chat that Alina and I did, which I think was also a brilliant chat about our South African shark meat ending up in international markets in fish and chips in Australia, for instance, um, with the consumers not being made aware that they're actually eating um, shark shark meat. Um, they just think it's fish and chips. It's referred to as flake and chips. So please go check out this uh, Shark Free Chips website. Educate yourself a little bit on this subject because, um, as Alina just mentioned, um, these sharks are still being targeted commerci commercially. And the fact that they can legally be caught, what we have seen in South Africa, and this is a subject that we can't or that we're not going to touch on, we can touch on it at some stage, but we're not going to touch on it too much today, is the fact that they are being fished out of MPAs as well. So the, the illegal boats will move into the MPAs, clean out um, entire schools of bronzes and then just move out of the MPA and it's as if it was legal. Um, so unfortunately, that is happening around our coastline as well um so and please go check out sorry sorry alina sorry dicky yeah guys please <laughs> do check out the website guys the problem with uh as we did mention before as i said uh, the problem with the sharks uh, remember how i mentioned that the population around the world are separated and uh, therefore it's quite tricky to control the population as we can't just look at the worldwide population we have to look at each one stock around the world so if south africa if south africa exporting their stock to australia and australia protecting their stock it's it's not doing really anyone any good so the sharks are still disappearing no. and guys we discussed before uh with uh, with kelly that uh, there are different types of giving birth so the copper sharks they do give live birth they are the viviparous and they give birth to 10 to 24 pups uh, every other year which is not that much uh, it's not your fecundity that your bony no. fish would have and it takes them such a long time to get mature so the copper sharks they would get mature around uh, only 20 years and they live only around 25 30 years so guys I mean, just uh, yeah, guys. So in South Africa, we've got longliners, um, 
targeting species like these and if you're taking out thousands of sharks in no way is that sustainable um but we're not just going to focus on the negative this evening i mean this is an incredible animal and once you start focusing on negative aspects like that um you just, it's you all, about in, awesome it, things. yeah you forget about the awesome things and it ends up pretty doomy and gloomy um so <laughs> so damn i forgot what i was gonna say um uh, let me just so, uh, have, we have a question dickie over here gabriel asked how big do they get i'm sorry i forgot to mention they can grow up to 3.3 meters so if you compare the white shark and great white shark the white shark they can grow over six meters so they're a little bit in different categories but uh if we if we have to distinguish between two species if we see them in the ocean uh, I would ask not to look at the size because size doesn't always matter. <laughs> and uh, there are juvenile, there are juvenile white sharks over there as well. And the pictures that I showed in the beginning, the, those animals are actually very similar sizes. So guys, yeah, the, uh, the copper sharks, they can grow up to 3.3 meters, which is quite impressive size. Yeah, well. man. I mean, if you're seeing a large bronzy guys, it's still definitely a formidable animal. It's, it's a large, it's a large shark, um, beautiful shark. Um, so Alina, we've obviously, we never, we originally saw the occasional bronze whaler around our cage diving vessels, but never really in the numbers that we have in, in recent times. Um, but, and we're seeing quite a lot of them around the cage diving vessels, or we did pre COVID guys. It's not like we're out there every day, um, with tourists now. Um, but can you tell us a bit about that? I wish, Dickie, I wish. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, okay, I uh, wish too. Are uh, bronze whalers nervous around white sharks? That's, an, uh, that's actually a brilliant question. And this is crazy yeah. how you guys yeah. question, <laughs> uh, asking <laughs> questions just before we're about to talk about this. Yeah, man, it's crazy, <laughs> I'm actually. Just gonna, I'm just going to mention this now. Uh, so, guys, since uh, 2017, and probably some of you have heard about the orca and white sharks interactions, I'm not going to go too deep into it because we are going to have a session with uh, Alison Towner, our senior marine biologist, next week, where she is going to actually mention the orc and white shark interaction, and she's going to explain everything about that. So since 2017, we actually started getting more and more bronze whalers, and this is exactly the reason why, because the white sharks, they did move out of the area for some time, and bronzies, they just got a little bit more bolder. So white sharks, they would feed on bronze whalers, on a, uh, small individuals uh, of bronze whalers. And of course, the bronzies, they would be quite nervous, as you mentioned, uh, around the white sharks, especially the large individuals. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Um, it is actually, it was really, really cool starting to see all these bronze whalers um, around the boats. And Alina... I believe we promised a little glimpse of what that looks like. Oh, Are we going to put guys. that up? Uh, sorry, have uh, have there ever been recorded birth? Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure if there is a footage of a bronze whaler giving birth. Uh, they do give live birth, so it's a little bit different from white sharks. Uh, where our white sharks are oviviviparous, which means that they still have a casing inside of them, and then uh, they hatch out of the casing, and then the mother gives birth. With the bronze whalers, it's a little bit different. I'm not sure if there is a footage, uh, but uh, it's it's not as um, um, elusive as it is with white sharks. We will have a check for you, and then if yeah, if if we definitely if we see it or if we find anything on it, I mean, white sharks. We don't have white sharks giving birth because no one has, um, no one's seen them mating or giving birth or at least filmed it. Um, but if we find anything, we will be chucking that onto our Q and A on Friday, guys, which might be postponed. Um, to a later date or we might just make a video about us answering those questions because lovely weather we're having we're having another big storm system coming through and the town that alina and i live in called Khanspa, when we've got these big storms coming through sometimes we don't have electricity here, not right? to less yeah winter is coming winter is here <laughs> but yeah guys i think Sorry, Dickie. I did promise the video, guys, and this video actually is going to show you that uh, our bronze whalers, they prove to be sometimes as entertaining and sometimes even more entertaining than our more famous visitors around the cage. Look at that, guys. So this is what our divers would see in the cage. Absolutely stunning animals. You can see the eyes, you can see the gills, you can see the beautiful color to them. And uh, they are quite flat and agile form of their body. Absolutely beautiful, guys. It's, it's still an incredible, nice yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, man, beautiful visibility. And guys, those are still pretty, pretty strong and formidable animals. I mean, the videos don't always do it justice if you can't gauge it to anything. Um, but it's incredible to see. I mean, it's such a beautiful animal. I mean, look at that. Absolutely. So, guys, also yeah. just wanted to mention, just notice the scratches on the shark. So, uh, as I said, they do live together. So they travel together. They would definitely bite each other, especially the females. They would be more, the most scratched uh, simply due to the, the the way they mate. So a male shark, they have to grab on a female in order to mate. So the, the females, they would have quite a lot of scratches around their back and around their pectoral fins. Yeah, man. Um, so you often see, and you know what's really cool, Alina, you know, which we sometimes see around the boats as well as guys, is these guys will have um, octopus sucker marks. Um, on their snouts as well um from feeding feeding on octopus in their um in the immediate area which is always something that's also very cool for me to see you don't see it that often um as no, you mentioned the, a huge part of their diet is on fish but that's just something cool that i that i have noticed before um so guys uh which places do bronze whalers appear uh, we have covered this but alina i'm sure we can cover it again yeah absolutely so guys you can you can find bronzies as i said pretty much all over the world they do like the shallower water so they would uh, usually stay quite close to the coast so this is our south africa namibia and also the east coast also they would go to australia uh to the uh, south south coast of australia and all around new zealand you would find them around the mediterranean also argentina a little bit around uh, the mexico and california there so yeah, pretty much everywhere around the world. It's just, as I said, those populations, they don't, uh, they don't really, they have no overlap, so they don't really interact. So if one population collapses, that population doesn't really probably have any chances of uh, bouncing back. I will see Tasha. Oh uh, yeah, guys. Tasha is somebody that uh, that wants to come visit us here in South Africa um, and come check out the bronzies and the white sharks after all this COVID stuff is done. So Tasha, I'm sure you'll get to see them once all this madness madness is over. Please come and visit. Other than that, Alina, we've covered a lot. I think most of what we've wanted to say for the day, guys. Please remember to always go check out our YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> I think this one's for you because I can't read that name. <laughs> yeah, where, is favorite, where, where is my favorite gray white? Here is your favorite gray white. This is my brother, Dicky. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what's up, bro? my surname in Russian. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay, wow. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, man. It looks like you guys are... Yeah. No, but I'm today we are it. focusing on bronze whalers. White sharks, next week. Yeah, guys, next week we'll be covering white sharks and some sea pandas. Um, as I was saying, guys, uh, check out our YouTube channel um, and you can win a shark cage diving experience valid for the next three years. And that is just if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, uh, this competition will be running till the end of the month when we're finishing up the series, specific series called Sign Save Sharks. Um, and then if you've subscribed from the beginning, to the end of um, the series to our YouTube channel. There'll be a lucky draw and you guys can win that experience, which would be obviously very epic. Come and check out our sharks. And also it's whale season, most likely. <laughs> oh yeah, it's whale season now. It's not in the next three years. Okay, I didn't think about that. But we always have cool stuff going on here, guys. Dolphins, whales, sharks, island seals. Um, so definitely go check out our YouTube channel. Other than that, thank you very much. Uh, join us next week again. We might have the Q&A on Friday. Otherwise, Alina and I might just make a video and post all the answers to the questions that we had. So next week, we're speaking to Alison Towner about orca predations on white sharks and just a bit um, around that. It should be a very interesting talk as well, and I'm looking forward to it. So thank you very much. Um, Alina, do you want to mention the Academy before we sign off? Yes, absolutely, guys. So as we mentioned before, if you are interested in any topics that we are covering over here and you want to know a little bit more about that, uh, we do have mentor sessions with our with our team, with our biology team. So, guys, you're very welcome to pop the, the email to this email academy uh, at marinedynamicstravel.com and just inquire about that. And we would be very happy to actually inform you about that. Yeah, man. Other than that, guys, it's been great. Alina, thank you so much. 
Okay, cool. You subscribe. Maybe awesome. you win, Tash. So Maybe you win. Cool, man. Thank you very much, guys. Moody, Thank TJ you, Moody. Thank you very much for tuning in. Cheers, guys. Have a great evening. Uh, Thank you, guys. Day, so depending on what time it is there. Thanks for joining us. Sorry, Why did it? <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Enjoy your day. Bye. Bye.